Welcome to one of the rarest geological occurrences that you can find anywhere on the planet, the lava columns of Guzelshazar. Good morning guys and welcome back to Amazra. Today is our second and final day here in Amazra. We're actually leaving Amazra roughly in the middle of the day, but we're gonna make it all work out today. Let's first explore a bit of Amazra. We have finally made it to the beach here in Amazra. The name of the beach? Amazra Plaji. I hate to say this, but this is not a nice beach. The sand, it's not like very, very white. It's kind of brownish. You've got a lot of trash. You've got cigarettes, you've got bottles, you've got a brick here apparently. Not a very, very clean beach either. The water, that is pretty good. It's, it's clear, it's cold, but other than that, the beach itself Really nothing spectacular, I would say. You can see a lot of locals come here. They're just swimming in the ocean, swimming in the water, playing with the, their dogs and stuff. But there's literally an entire harbor blocking your view of the mountains in the back now. So that kind of sucks as well. But it, it's okay. It's, it's not terrible. The temperature is nice. The water is nice. So yeah, I guess you could sort of enjoy yourself here. We are back at the hotel. Our bags, as you can tell, are mostly packed. The entire room is empty and we are ready to leave Amazra. Let's go. Thank you. We have just made it onto the bus. This bus will take us directly to Barton and from there, that's where things get a little bit tricky, but for now, we've got our ride to Barton. It's about to be, I think, an hour from a master to Barton, so it should be a nice bus ride. It's currently 10.54. Bus leaves at 11. I could not have timed this better, so let's enjoy the bus ride. All right, oh. we have made it to Barton. But I'm a bit confused on how to get to Guzel Shazar. So apparently there is a bus that goes to Guzel Shazar. The main bus stop told me to head down there, but then the people over there told me to head back there. So we've got some travel confusion going on here, but that's okay. We're gonna figure it out and uh, find out how we can get to Guzel Shazar. We have finally made it to our next stop here in Turkey. This is a place known as Guzel Şehzar, but uh, there's literally only one pension, like a hotel here, and it's all the way up on the mountains. But uh, the view is exceptional. I can't wait to start exploring this place, but we need to drop off our stuff first because, man, this stuff is heavy. After a bit of negotiation and a very hard flight of stairs up here, we are finally checked into a little pension. It's called Hizar Pension, and it is above the beach, overlooking the beach. It is beautiful. I have to say, this is probably one of the most beautiful beaches I've seen in Turkey, and trust me, I've seen a lot of beautiful beaches here. Now, just like at Pinarbashi, this is the only accommodation here in the entire town. So they can afford to charge higher prices and still keep customers. So one night here, originally they offered me 200 liras. That's without breakfast. I negotiated it down, told them, you know, I'm not gonna use the TV. I'm just gonna stay here one night. It's just one person. Managed to bring it down to 150 liras. So that's how much I'm paying for a night at this uh, accommodation. But depending on, you know, how many people you have, how many nights you're staying, you can obviously negotiate that higher or lower. Now, 
This beach looks stunning and I can't wait to go in and go for a swim. So first, let's unpack everything, get our drones ready, get everything ready, and we are definitely going in for a dip today. So the history of Guzel Shea's art is actually really, really impressive. I'm not talking about Greek or Roman history here. I'm talking about millions and millions of years ago when Earth was Pangaea, when there were all these, like, there's one continent instead of seven different continents. This entire place was like a lake. Now, because there was so much volcanic activity during the time of Pangaea, these lava columns were created here in Guzel Shea's art. And according to locals here, and according to the signboard here, the only other place in the world where you can see lava columns like this is somewhere in California in the United States. I don't know where in California, but uh, other than that, this is the only place you can see it, which is to me incredible that I am seeing like the rarest geological occurrence in the entire world. But that's on the western side of the beach. We're not going to the western side of the beach. We are currently climbing a mountain, which is why I am so out of breath. But there's apparently a castle up here. Let's go see what that castle is all about. All right, well, yeah, I'm not going to that castle. It's so far away. I've already walked like 45 minutes and I went on this trail and then it died. So I don't know how to get to the castle. I think you're supposed to take this other route on this side over to the castle, but I'm not doing it. This, it's too dark. Um, they should put signs out here that say which road to the castle instead of letting people try and figure it out because it is very, very tiring and very, very difficult. We're gonna head back to the beach. You can see the castle for yourself here. Like you can have a very clear view of it. I don't know how much better the view is from the castle. I don't think it's worth it. It's honestly just a pile of rocks now covered in trees. So I'm not exactly sure what I would be going there to see anyway. So we're gonna head back to the beach. Hopefully we're gonna take a little dip. We have made it back down to Guzel Shehizar Beach and uh, if you hear a drone, that's not mine. That's uh, someone else's drone that they're flying here. This place is really popular with locals, but I haven't seen a single tourist. So they're all locals coming down here and uh, playing with the drones, swimming, just enjoying the beautiful scenery here. Now, when we were up at the castle, it was blue skies, no clouds. And suddenly when I get down to the beach, the clouds all just rolled in and started covering up the sun, which is such a shame because it would be beautiful if the sun was out. We're gonna head to the other side of the beach now. So we're gonna go check out those uh, lava sticks. I don't know, lava columns, lava pillars, whatever those things are. Let's go see what they're all about. So what the Turkish government has done here is pretty awesome. So this, like I mentioned, you can only see these sort of lava columns in one other place on the planet, according to the sign at least. It's in California and the United States. So because it's such a rare occurrence, they've really tried to develop this part and make it easily accessible for both Turkish citizens and people from abroad. So they've built an entire wooden walkway that extends from one end of the beach to the other so that you can see the lava column. So if you do come here, there there is development. There's one hotel, there's a beautiful boardwalk, there are some chairs, there are some boats. So there are still some tourist facilities, there's still some infrastructure here, but it's just not being broadcasted around the world, that's all. So what's really cool is that they have this boardwalk surrounding this like clump of rocks almost. 
that gives you a really, really good view of the columns. And if you look at the columns, they are so unique. Like I haven't seen anything like this anywhere else in the world. You have these like almost rectangular square shaped columns just sticking out from the ocean. And some of these are like short little rectangular blocks, but some of them are really, really tall and they extend all the way up. Trees are growing on top of some of these columns because over time, you know, plants were able to develop here. But it is just incredible to see something like this. Like I mentioned earlier, the only other place, at least according to the sign, that you can see something like this is in the United States, in California. It is so impressive to see these huge cliffs and columns that are just, like really, they're just jutting out of the ocean. It's really magnificent to see this, and it kind of reminds me of the cliffs of Rayleigh in Thailand, uh, in the Krabi area, because, I mean, these cliffs, they just emerge out of nowhere, and then you have just like a beautiful beach that emerges right off of the cliffs. It's really, really stunning, and I can't wait to fly my drone here. about this place. People don't know about Guzal Shehzad. And you tell other people all around Turkey, you know, I want to go to Guzal Shehzad, I want to go to Barton. People don't really know about this place and that is such a shame because I mean, look at this. Look at look at the beach. Look at the uh, cliffs here. There's only one other place in the world where you can see something like that and people in Turkey don't even know about this place. That that is incredible to me. The sun is going to be setting soon and it's actually getting a bit windy, but I haven't even swum in the ocean yet. I, I literally have swimming trunks on and I haven't even used them to go in. So we're gonna go in for a quick dip. It's probably gonna be cold, but I'm hoping that the clouds blocking the sun will, you know, move apart just a little bit so that the sun can shine on me. I was gonna go in for a swim and I just realized that I left my towel back at the Pantheon. Let's go in for a swim. Well, at least he did some running and walking and the sun is finally out. Oh, thank the Lord. I was getting a bit cold, but the warmth of the sun, oh, that feels amazing. I would say that the beach is probably one of the best beaches I've seen in Turkey. It's not like the widest sand, but the water is very, very clear. And just the vibe of the place is what I really like. It's just a little coastal town, that's all it is. You've got a beautiful sunset over there. You've got like these lava cliffs on one side. You've got an adorable puppy over there. Like, it doesn't get much better than this. I honestly feel like this is the Philippines. I, you could tell me right now this is the Philippines and I would probably believe you because a place like this, a place where you have these sort of cliffs, you have a puppy over there. I mean, it doesn't, it really doesn't get much better than this. The sun is going to set soon, but we're just going to relax on the beach here. I'm not going in for another swim. I learned that lesson the hard way. It is cold in there. This is one of those places in the next 10, 20 years, it's going to blow up when people come to Turkey and find out about this place. But for now, I have it all to myself. was a perfect 
sunset. Literally, just as the sun was setting, a bunch of clouds were above the sun and they created this like crown of light that just reflected over the entire sky. I think that might be the most gorgeous sunset I've seen in my entire life. And le let's get this straight. I've seen a lot of sunsets in my life. That was perfect. It was truly perfect. Now to make this perfect day even more perfect, let's go get some fresh fish, some delicious dinner here on the beach of Gujil Sehijar. Now when it comes to food options here in Guzal Shehizard, you don't really have many choices. I think there's only two restaurants open. So this is the one that's on like a mountain side top and you have a really great view of the beach. But the food they serve is really, really simple. They literally just have fish or meat. But the fish options they have are just so many different types of fishes. I got a fish known as palamut and it is fried until it is crispy. It looks so juicy. Oh, this is gonna be so delicious. They're literally just a family run shop. They were frying the fish back there just now. It looks so good. Let's try it out. Mm. Some of the freshest fish I've ever had, ever. It is so, so fresh. Pretty sure it was caught today. I mean, like I said, this place specializes in fish and oh my god, it is so good. So even though there's not a lot of options for food at Gujil Cesar, the food is so good. It's high quality, it's fresh, it's simple, and that's all that really matters. We got a salad too, but I don't feed your vegetables on this channel as you guys probably know, so we're just gonna leave that out. Anyways, we're gonna finish dinner and then we're gonna head back and take a warm shower because it is so cold here. Gujil Cesar has been I would say the hidden secret of Turkey. I absolutely love this place. I'm so happy to be here. This is literally the most beautiful place in Turkey, I think. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know when the next video is coming up. And I will see you guys on the next video. Bye guys.